Good morning. I am Greg Carter, a recent graduate of the Savvy Coders Full Stack Web Development Program. And during this course, I built an SBA. So a single page application. Mine was designed to assist martial artists in progressing through the various belt levels, keeping track of all their techniques, all their fitness levels, a way to prepare them and manage their activities that gets them to the next belt and beyond. So to take a look at what we have here, we have what we decided for this application for our squad analysis. We have some strengths, some weaknesses, opportunities, and some threats. So the strengths of strength of this application is it allows students to take responsibility for their own progress. So by filling out this app on a daily basis, they're becoming well, they're taking a little bit of ownership for their own art. It captures all the requirements for each belt level to progress to the next belt level. So the student will always know what they have to work on. And students in this particular case being karate are generally from five years to 15 years of age. This app will enable the senseis to provide written feedback to the students. So a lot of times the instructors and the senseis, they don't have time after class because the kids get picked up by the parents and they go away. But the instructor wants to say something to each of the students. So we'll be able to write that down and send it via this app. Now, an opportunity for this is there are several dojos in the Massachusetts area right now. And it has a potential to expand to more than just the elite freestyle karate dojos. It enables the senseis to teach responsibilities to the students, so that's something they already do, but this gives them just another tool to teach more responsibilities. And it potentially gives students some motivation to work harder. So if they see they're slacking on something, they see they're weak on something, they, see they, haven't, they haven't improved, they can double their efforts to get to that next goal level. Some of the weaknesses of this app is, is it is going to require students to input the data. And as we are talking about five to 15 year olds, they may not do it very often and they may not do it correctly. I mean, it's pretty easy, but they might exaggerate a little bit. So the next weakness point is, is it will likely require some adult supervision as the student fills out the application. So with respect to threats, there are some fitness apps out there that are pretty high speed. Um, Garmin, Nike, to name a couple. However, they don't track the martial arts aspect of it. So they don't track the techniques, what is required to progress to the next belt level. And yeah, belt level progression, they don't track that. They just track the fitness itself. Um, there is the idea that some of these brown belts are already going to say, hey, I didn't use this app and I got all the way to brown belt. I don't need it in the future. And that's a thing. People don't like change, kids especially. So they may just not use it. However, the white belts are coming into the dojo immediately. They're not going to know any other way. So as time progresses, all the students are just going to know that this is the way that they track their progress and take ownership and responsibility is bestowed upon them from the senseis. So we do have some strengths, weaknesses. We do have some threats and we do have some opportunities with this application. We will discuss now how it will flow together. So if you see here, as you log into the application, you can go to the home page. Then you're going to go to either the student page or the sensei page. And both of those will have access to the techniques, physical fitness and black belt testing pages where they will input their information will they register their requirements. There will be a submissions library where the students can submit their essays and their um, they have to do work to get to their next, to get to Black Belt. So community service type of thing. They submit those into the submissions library. The students will be able to submit to it, but the sensei is really the ones that can pull it out once it's submitted. So this is how it's designed right now. And for the wire diagrams, and bear with me on this, we're gonna have to stick a pin in this and we'll come back to it a little bit later. This is how I foresee the application appearing as we develop it. So the homepage will have an overview, explanation of the app, how to use the app, 
takes you to the student page. The student is going to be eventually going to be like a dashboard. It's going to have a photo of the student. It's going to have all the relevant data. It's going to have the belt completions and the dates they completed it. And then you'll go to the techniques page. This is going to be a list of what is required, the techniques required for each of the belts, and where the student inputs the amount of time he's spent practicing on it by date. So he can see how much time he's been putting into it. So the sensei can tell him to either slow down or speed it up or work harder, practice differently, and so forth, right? Communication. The next one is the exercise. It's so going to be the testable exercises per belt level. And it'll have a logger, a tracker of how often the student actually does those exercises and how much they're progressing over time prior to their next belt level test. And you have the belt, black belt test page, which is a big deal for the martial artists. There's a lot involved in it. You have to take a candidate class where other instructors test you prior to the original test, just so they can make sure you're on par to actually be successful in the test. So they will put that information in the candidate class portion. The kata, this is the first belt level where the students create their own kata. So they're going to put their kata steps and techniques into here so the senseis can help guide them towards being even better. They will also have the fit, physical fitness information of how they're preparing for their physical fitness test and what is required for that test. The senseis, ultimately, on the sensei page, is going to have a list of each of the students' names per belt level and age group. The sensei will just click on the name. He'll be able to send that. A little pop-out box will come out. The sensei will be able to send that particular student a message motivation, correction, whatever he needs to do to help inspire that student to take the next steps up. The library, like I said, they're going to, students are going to be able to submit to this one and senseis are going to be able to pull it out. So all of the paper requirements that are required, their proposal for their uh, projects, their essays, and their community service sign-off sheet will all go into here so the senseis can see it. Now, with respect to that, I have to talk about just a little bit of what we learned in the Savvy Coders Web Development Bootcamp. So we did learn the Agile methodologies as well as Scrum. So Agile being a mindset that is really just a mindset that is flex is a flexible way of thinking that enables people to react quickly and adapt quicker to the changing situations. And so it promotes collaborations amongst the team, knowledge sharing amongst the team, um, getting feedback from each other. It really helps the organizations to create value and continuous improvement. So Agile being a mindset, that's where Crum, Scrum comes in. Scrum is more of a framework used by these teams to manage the work and solve problems collaboratively. So they do it in short cycles. So you're always working in short cycles, like one to two weeks, sometimes more, but I can stick around the two week mark. Those cycles, you develop what you can, and what you plan to do inside of those two week cycles. So during this bootcamp, I did, I was a developer during our teams. So I participated in the daily standups where we let each other know what we accomplished in the previous 24 hours, and if we had any blockers, what was holding us up. I took part in the sprint reviews, which allowed us to continue forward planning while managing the things that we have accomplished and the things that we have not yet accomplished and need to be carried forward. The sprint, re the sprint retrospectives were a way of looking back on the previous sprint and asking ourselves, what did we do well? What do we need to improve upon? What did we do poorly? And then we went into sprint planning. So you're always planning for the next sprint based upon what you're accomplishing in this sprint. So you always have your eye on the horizon so you can continuously develop at a more flexible and fluid pace. So this is what Agile meant to me. This is how the scrub process worked for me. But now for the meat and potatoes of the capstone project. I'm going to show you now my project. So it's for the Elite Freestyle Karate Dojo and the students therein. So I came up with the homepage. Now, bear with me. 
we stuck a pin in the wireframes. We're going to pull that pin out right now. It is not complete yet. It will eventually look how the wireframes did, but it is not there yet. So just let me explain where we're at right now. We have the home page. The navigations to the other pages, we have a message really from the instructors and senseis to the students on how to motivate them, a portion on how to utilize the app, and a portion on how to track your own progress. From there, we have a contacts page, send me mostly for parents to send messages to the senseis. We have an instructor page that we'll get to in just a minute. We have the student page. In here, it doesn't look like the wireframes yet, but again, we're progressing. Rome was not built in a day. The training log submissions, this is the first step in, in it. So we will have, the student will fill this out every day. And once they hit save, it comes down to their little log here. So they will be able to view it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to see what they've been overdoing, what they haven't been paying enough attention to, and what to plan for the next sprint, if you will. Then eventually we'll have a techniques page where I'm going to have videos on how to perform the technique properly. Don't have the videos in there yet, but we will. So the students do perfect practice rather than just poor practice, practicing the wrong thing over and over again, they will eventually get it wrong. So the instructor page will have his ability to send messages to the students. It doesn't look like it's supposed to yet, but it will. Future state, it's in development. And then I'll have a section down at the bottom for the sensei for the messages from the students to the sensei as well. Now, that is the functionality of the web page as it stands right now. Let's now look at some of our code, though. So, looking at index.js, so we built a single page application. We've got multiple folders, multiple files, all of them feeding into each other to create that that we, that we just saw. One part that I found rather fun was the training log tracker. You saw how we built it. It captures all the requirements or all the things that the students are doing to prepare for the next test. And that's where we're going to capture it here. That's all captured here. So this was a fun part for me. And you combine this portion with the CSS portion. Right around there. And that's what gave us the scroll bar because we don't want to just scroll the whole page up. We do want to have a portion in so they can scroll up and down. And that was the fun part for me. Didn't know how to make a scroll bar before. I do now. And it captures all the training requirements for that student to progress to the next bell bubble. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my capstone presentation. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. And we will just determine a desired future state.